yeah, they've done a heck of a job on this thing. It was in pretty, pretty bad shape when they took it on and they fixed it up and it's, it's amazing. They've done a lot of work. Everybody, can you hear me? Yes. Loud and clear. <laughs> good. So far, so good. Thank you all for coming. Three years ago, the Historical Society of Wyndham County purchased the Newfane Railroad Station from the Mantell family. It was our intention to restore the old depot and the water tank house and create a museum of the West River Railroad. I don't know if any of us on the board were all that confident we could fulfill that goal, but when hundreds of people showed up at the launching of our project three years ago, almost to the day, we realized how much interest there was in the project. And since that evening at Newbrook, we have been overwhelmed and heartened by the community support for the, for the project. And just as it did 140 years ago, the West River Railroad has connected our communities from Brattleboro. Why would I get choked up over that? <laughs> <laughs> from Brattleboro up the gauge, as they say in the West River Railroad days, to South Londonderry. In 1885, J.J. Green wrote in his diary in August, This has been a beautiful day. We have been at work cleaning up the depot, calcimining the walls, and fixing it so that it looks neat and tidy. I have oiled the settees and chairs so they look almost as good as new. Little did he know we would be doing the same thing 140 years later and turning his station into a museum of the West River Railroad. All of us at the Historical Society of Wyndham County <laughs> are grateful hosts today and we thank you all for helping to preserve this piece of our history for generations to come. We've invited two people to say a few words on this special occasion. Lee Webb. Lee Webb. <laughs> Lee Webb created the H. Albert Webb Memorial Award. Railroad Preservation. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> to recognize his father's love for New England railroading, the Historical Society was honored to be the recipient of this $10,000 grant in 2015. The Mass Bay Railroad enthusiasts administered the grant but I know Lee speaks for railroad enthusiasts near and far who have supported this project. Thank you, Lee. I don't know if I really need this, but. <laughs> Laura asked me to say a few words about the award. Now, in, in the general context, I noticed down, I just wandered down here, noticed that $135,000 were raised total? Actually more of a, now. Yeah, but yeah. it was for a goal, towards a goal of $172,000. Uh, yes, yeah. So the 10000 that I gave in my father's name is a small amount. <laughs> but um, she wanted to me to talk about the award just a little bit, and I won't bore you for too long, but... Um, my father and I bonded over railroading. He was a workaholic. He worked 12, 14 hours a day. And I didn't find out until after he passed and I was going through his paperwork that uh, a supervisor in an evaluation 
said my father may have been suffering from a mild case of narcolepsy because he kept finding him asleep at his desk. <laughs> so that kind of explained why he spent 12 or 14 hours because he had so much work to do and he would take him longer to do it. But When I was young, my father was a member of the Massachusetts Bay Railroad Enthusiasts. And since then, I've become a member. <clears throat> and the way we spent time together was either over the Lionel train set that he would add to it by giving me the cars and the engines every Christmas, and then he would then play with it. <laughs> In fact, I can't even remember being actually allowed to touch it. <laughs> he would say to me, what do you want me to build? And I'd point out a car and say, don't touch it. I'd point out a car and he'd back the, the engine in and he'd create trains and then run them around the loop and back. And now what do you want me to create? And that's how we, we played <laughs> with the Lionel train set. But he loved taking railroad excursions and the Mass Bay RRE, I don't know if how many of you are familiar with that, would offer many excursions, uh, several each year. And the, the, the tradition was always the same. We'd rise very early in the morning, create a picnic basket of sandwiches, and I remember peanut butter and jelly for me, devil ham for him, and he'd throw in a bag of Hershey Kisses for me. That was my treat. And it, you can well imagine I ate the kisses before I ate the sandwiches. <laughs> but then we'd go off and um, start on a train trip that would usually begin around 8 or 9 in the morning and go until eight or nine or ten o'clock at night. It was a very long day and I was very young and I would look out the train and the train windows and see things going by and we'd be in vintage equipment and I didn't really understand the significance until I got much older but um, that was the way my father and I bonded and as he got older and his health started to fail. He had moved to Phoenix uh, to Sun City and there was this wonderful steam trip to the canyon, Grand Canyon. I don't know how many of you might be aware of that out of Williams, Arizona. And I had promised to take him on one of those trips. Well, with his failing health, I was not able to do so. But when he passed, I had him cremated. His ashes were in a box and a shoulder bag. And I took that trip with him to Grand Canyon because I had promised him, and we did it. <clears throat> when he passed, obviously, some money came into my hands as well as my sister's, and I promised that I would be only the steward of that money, so I created the award to pass it on so hopefully other generations could learn to love railroads the way my father had taught me to. And I gotta tell you, for this, the money was well spent, Dad. <laughs> Thank you, Lee. <laughs> Laura Treishman is State Historic Preservation Officer for the Vermont Division of Historic Preservation. There you are. <laughs> The Historical Society was honored to receive a competitive grant from the state for the preservation of the Newfane Railroad Station. We thank everyone in the division for their guidance and assistance in our historic restoration of this building. Um, Laura will have a, can say a few words, please. Thank you. Thanks for coming down. Thank you very much. I'm just really honored to be here on behalf of the Division for Historic Preservation. Um, we're kind of here twofold for today as um, we were able to be a partner with you in the preservation of this great resource and then our Roadside Historic Marker Program um, in the placement of a marker to attract people to come and see it. Um, a as Laura mentioned, the grant program is very competitive we get usually about an ask of $700,000 annually, and we have $200,000 to spread around the state. Um, it's a very small program, and it requires a one-to-one -one match. And with your application 
and your strong desire, which I think is also foretold in as many of you here today that have seen this project through, was really easy for us to, to fund and help and be a partner and, and watch you steward the preservation of this building. Um, for us as historic preservationists, you know, we like to save absolutely everything. We recognize that's not always possible, but what is really important is making sure that the history that you know becomes real. And that's what you've done here in the preservation of this building. This building can tell the story. Um, it doesn't need a roadside historic marker to attract people, but I guarantee you that marker will bring people here. Um, this is really fabulous and you, you deserve a pat on the back and an applause among yourselves for doing this. And the Historical Society most definitely deserves an attaboy for stewarding this all the way through because not only did you do it in three years, which is really something, um, you got the marker application through in five months, which I have to say is really unheard of. <laughs> <laughs> but that goes to the fact that you know your story, you know your history, and your passion was really very clear. Um, and, and we really respect that and we want to reach out and, and help you take care of that. The Roadside Historic Marker is the 239th marker to be placed in the state. Hmm. The 240th is being unveiled on Tuesday. So we're, we're really very, very excited to, to commemorate this. And, and I can tell you, we have people that go looking, like the 251 Club, they go looking for all 240 markers, and they'll tell us if they're in the wrong place. Um, but I, I want to give a shout out to not just the Historical Society, but most especially to, to Laura for helping work yeah. and, yeah. and shepherd this. And also to our partners at VTrans, you might not often hear that, but VTrans very quickly got into attention because the proposal for where we were going to put the historic marker made them very nervous. And they immediately came down and met with Laura and figured out the right place to put it and installed it. Um, so really a thank you to VTrans for being a partner in this program. The Historic Marker Program in particular was started in 1947, so as you can imagine, um, it's something very important to us in stewarding history, telling history, not just to mark places and events, but uh, to attract visitors. Um, and our grant program, which was started in the 1980s, is really very important because it's the best way for us to engage historic preservation. So on behalf of Governor Scott and the Division for Historic Preservation, I just want to say to the Historical Society, to Laura, to all of you, well done and thank you for pre preserving Vermont's history. You did it really well. Mm. <laughs> Laura's um, uh, congratulating us on expediting the historic marker application, but she was the one who really got it through in those five months. The emails were flying back and forth. Uh, for those of you who wish to join us at the unveiling of the roadside um, historic marker, uh, please follow us uh, down to the corner here in Route 30 after the ribbon cutting. Um, if you um, would like to join in on that. Otherwise, the depot building and don't forget the water tank house, which is follow the direction of the railroad tracks uh, about a hundred yards north of here, um, is open for uh, you to visit. And there'll be food, there are refreshments available, uh, hot dogs and hamburgers served at one o'clock. Um, but before we move on to those activities, there's one last thing to do. Um, there's one station master of the Newfane Railroad Station who has not appeared in the history books. Not yet, at least. I think you all might know who that is, Larry Robinson. We would not be celebrating this event today if it wasn't for him.
thank the uh, Lord for those <coughs> kind words, but in all uh, truthfulness, I just caused her three years of aggravation, <laughs> <coughs> which I apologize for. <laughs> and uh, each of you should uh, come and thank Lord today, because it's her vision created right the My scissors. <laughs> <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce said that the, <laughs> the Chamber of Commerce said I could get those pink ones. I said, no, oh, no, they'll be too awkward. <laughs> yeah.